All right, we are live. I did a sound check. Everything's go. So I know that you can hear me because I uh, ended the first video to make sure that we didn't have the issues that we had the first time. Come on, team. Give God a hand clap of praise in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus, give God a hand clap of praise. We are live. We are live here at Abundant Season. We are happy. I need y'all to give a shout right now. A loud shout saying, there's power. Come on. Say, there is power. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on, y'all. Clap as loud as you can. Come on, louder. Say, there's power. Yes. Come on. I need to hear you, Sister Annette. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God a shout. Let's give him a hand. Come on, keep it going loud. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Sounding good. So I've got my team in the back. They're looking at me from the big screen. I've got a, a green screen behind me. I've got a all kinds of uh, barriers so that they're safe while I don't have my mask on. Amen. And so they have their mask on at all times. If you're on with me, give me a shout. Hallelujah. Glory uh, be to God again. We had some tech technical difficulty, but if you stayed around on Tuesday, I'm telling you, you got a wonderful um, celebration and uh, learning more about, let's talk about sex. Let's talk about less. And let's talk about how you're living when you're learning about that. Amen. So God is good and he is greatly to be praised. I am so thankful. Uh, they gave me a little bit more room. Deacon came in on, uh, when was it, Thursday? And we worked on uh, the uh, uh, the arrangement. So we've got this um, uh, live uh, uh, mic here. So hopefully you can hear me better. I like to give a shout out to folks. I see uh, Minister uh, Lorraine on, so God bless you and hallelujah. Uh, we're so happy to have you on and we're just saturating the atmosphere, amen? Saturating the atmosphere and letting God know that he is large and in charge and we are just so, so happy to be part of the family, the household of faith, amen? So let's just start off in prayer. We gave God a shout, a hand clap of praise. We tested the sound system because of some technical difficulty, but God is on the throne where it's God's will, it's God's way, and he is not going to let us fail. Amen. So I just want to say a, 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 a opening prayer right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful for you. We are thankful for you in such a time as this. Father God, we thank you that you've given us technology to keep on keeping on, even when things around us are in chaos. Oh, Father God, the world may be in chaos, but God, you are in control. So feed us this morning, oh, Father God. Feed us so that we will grow. Feed us, oh, Father God, so we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Feed our hearts, feed our souls, feed our minds, Lord. Father God, let us get into position. Father God, we thank you. You got a strategy for us, and we're ready for the strategy that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Father God, we're in your flow, and we are ready to stay on the battlefield for you in the name of Jesus. So I'm so glad that we're, we're upgrading our technology because we know that that's going to be part of the future. We know that it's going to be important for people to know that they can reach the body of Christ even when, you know, the, <clears throat> the, the church is closed. Even before that, we had conference calls when there were storms outside. So now we're doing Facebook Live. We're going to have Zoom Bible study, so you may not see us on Facebook because we're doing Zoom so that you'll have an opportunity for question and answers without having to type it in. Amen. So I want to uh, give you some uh, announcements. Uh, number one, uh, our pantry has been open nonstop since the Dayton tornadoes.
So uh, you are welcome if you're not familiar with it and you're from the Ohio area, because we've had people come as far as Cleveland. So if uh, you are, are in need of groceries, uh, feel free to uh, give us a call. The number is 937-275-3770. So you can rewind uh, this video and make sure and put it on pause so that you will have uh, the telephone number. And the place that you would pick up the groceries is Abundant Season at 643 Troy Street, uh, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Uh, Amen. And so um, you have to call because of uh, we're COVID and with me being a doctor of public health, everything is protocol, protocol, protocol. So we have a no contact process and we love the appointment process because you're not standing in line, but we still allow those that don't have phones and don't have a way to call to come at a certain time and they just wait until after the appointment and get their food as well. Or while we're there, they can make an appointment earlier in the day while we're stocking the shelves and then come back for their appointment. So you must make an appointment. You must wear a mask. You must practice social distancing. And you must, um, uh, or I should say, and there's absolutely no smoking. So um, the, the uh, process is you get the food out of a grocery cart that's between our, uh, our inside and then the door pushes open and you just you don't have to touch the door you just get the food out and then we re-sanitize the cart again uh, so we don't want you to touch the door or the glass because we have to keep re-sanitizing it amen so make sure you don't touch your mask you know so you don't want to and this one's highly sanitized so you don't want to do this and then you're touching your mask the top that's that's a no-no so you uh once you um this is a brand new mask but once you have your mask on uh do not take it off until you get home and i recommend if you can soak it in um some disinfectant um that would be fine or some uh hand sanitizer and then wash it with soap and water or spray it with disinfectant uh that's for fabric and then wash it so that you can keep your mask sanitized. Uh, so this is so very, very important because people are wondering how can you catch uh, COVID with a mask? It's from the touch, touching um, contaminated surfaces. So remember the mask is protecting you from what's on the outside. So if your hands are touching the mask, which is to protect you on the outside, you can still uh, get uh, contract uh, the virus. If you're touching door handles, uh, the microphone that I have here, I don't think you can see it, um, but this microphone, okay, that's making all this noise. Um, if I let other people use it, then it would be contaminated, but I am the only person that's using the mic, amen? So keep that in mind. I've got to, sorry about that. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind as well that... Um, Anything that you use or you, um, uh, podiums, desks, chairs, anything that you touch and it's not on the inside or if you have guests, wipe it down. Amen. Give God some praise. So today's topic is all about uh, prayer. Amen. Prayer, and I'm going to put the music on pause, but it's about prayer. You know, even our church covenant uh, when we collect um, collect our offering. We always pray our church covenant. I was on the phone with um, a friend and a church member yesterday, and we were on for a while, and I was on my way to the post office. So I said, I need to put you on pause before I mail my bills because I don't mail my bills um, before I pray over them. I said, because I may be paying more um, for um, services and God is saying, no, that's kingdom money. And so if they're overcharging me, then God will let me know that, you know, that it's kingdom money. Amen. So we have to realize that God is in complete control 
at all times. You know, we will bless the Lord at all times and praises will continually come from our mouths. And so I want to start with the prayer for um, our church or our covenant. And so it's in our, our booklet, but this is a card that if you've ever uh, visited Abundant Season, this is a card that you would get from us. And we call it the master's card. So I want to go over this card uh, with you. Amen. It's called the master's card. And when you think of uh, a, a master's card, you think of a credit card because you have to realize that everything that we have belongs to Jesus. Even what's in your wallet belongs to Jesus. Even the car you drive belongs to Jesus. Even the house or the apartment that you live on belongs to Jesus. So anything and everything that you get through prayer, you should be dedicating it back to the Lord and thanking him and saying, thank you for allowing me to be a good steward with the things that I have, amen? So then the card starts off with the master's card, and then it talks about an account limit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's out of the gospels okay, where God is going to give you a return on what you give to him. So we can never outbeat giving God and a thousand fold. So then I give you some scriptures where you can find where it talks about that. And, and Matt, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse eight, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 28, uh, Mark chapter four, verse 20 and Deuteronomy 1 11. And then under that, it says unlimited favor is granted to those who believe. So every sin in my past and in my future is forgiven. So that's what we need to remember as Christians when we confess with our mouth that Jesus died on the cross and on the third day he rose and we repent of our sins, we are saved. And so every sin in my past and in my future is forgiven is under scripture, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Every sick, excuse me, every sickness and disease covered by the blood. Uh, that's uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 28. Uh, it says that if you obey my statutes and commandments, no sickness or disease shall come upon you. And it says every debt covered by the blood, Matthew 6, 9, that's the Lord's prayer where you ask God to forgive our debts and forgive our debtors. And so, and then if you look at Luke chapter 11, verse uh, uh, two, when it talks about the Lord's Prayer, it says, uh, forgive our transgressions, our trespasses, and, and forgive those that trespass against us. So the key is when we go so deep in debt where we get to a point where we don't care or we don't see a way out, repentance is the best thing. So where debt, whether you see it as a financial thing or debt where you see it as a sin, whatever it is, God has paid the price. So we put financial debts under that prayer. Amen. So the, the thing is resting in prayer. So you want to rest in prayer about your finances. Hallelujah. Every person who hurt me covered by the blood. And then we go back to Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises against me shall shall be condemned. Every need right now in my future is covered by the blood. And I'll get to that scripture once we get to what we say loud and in, in, in here. Uh, okay. And so then it says, um, have faith and remember it is the Lord thy God who gives us the power to get wealth. That's Deuteronomy 8.18. 18. Remember the Lord thy God. You know, we, we forget to say, remember the Lord thy God. For he is the one that gives us the power to get well. We just want to say the Lord gives us the power to get well. No, it says, remember, we got to remember him. Do this in remembrance of me. Have faith and remember the Lord thy God. So, and then it says, this is my abundant season. So remember it said every need right now and in my future is covered by the blood. So God says that he can supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And then he says in Ephesians 3.20, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the spirit that worketh in you. Hallelujah. And then Galatians 6.9, it says, do not grow weary because in due season you shall reap if you faint not. See, most of us get tired. And trust me, I can tell you, uh, my staff can tell you, we're tired. We work a 10-hour day on Thursday. That's our, one of our longest days. And we are so exhausted by the time uh, we are 
finished with distribution and stocking our shelves and making sure everything's secure. We start early in the morning and sometimes we don't get a lunch break. Most of the times we don't. So it's important that, that we know that even when you grow weary, don't faint. Come on, somebody type, don't faint. I need y'all to shout loud in here, don't faint. Oh, Hallelujah, they're back there. They're watching me on the big screen because we want them safe and we want they want to make sure I'm safe because I don't have on a mask right now. Hallelujah. Okay, so his grace is sufficient. This is the hard part. I will love the unlovable, teach the unteachable, forgive the unforgivable and forget it. Throw it into the sea of forgetfulness to walk in the phenomenal favor of God. And then you make it personal. I am phenomenal. Because you know why? Your God is phenomenal. And I will break every chain. And I love um, the song by, I can't remember her name. If you know it, just type it. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. And she got married recently. So I praise God. Tasha Cobbs Leonard. Amen. So you are phenomenal. So use your master's card today. Amen. And if you ever need prayer, never don't. I know you can see this. If I can get it right so you can see it. Don't leave home without Jesus. Amen. So that's what we give out so that you have a prayer even starting out. But I want to talk about the power of the Lord's Prayer. Once I'm I'm conducting a deliverance uh, and I, I need to get a book and I'm hoping that I don't drop everything trying to get it. Amen. So bear with me if you hear extra sound. But this is one of our study tools. And if you do not have it, you need to uh, get this. Amen. Uh, but uh, it talks about the power of prayer. So this is one. And then I have 12 weapons of spiritual warfare. Let me see if what I need is in this book. But we're talking about resting in prayer. Amen. And we want you to rest in the power of his word. Uh, rest in the power of prayer. Amen. And so um, if you know that you know what you know, what you know, what you know, that when you pray, you know that you can get a, pray, a prayer through say amen. Okay. So one of the things I want to make sure you understand is prayer is one of the most, once you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Prayer is one of the most important things in your power that you can do to ask for the power of God in the name of Jesus. I mean, when you're you're not feeling well, when uh, you feel sickness coming over your body, when people are not treating you well, you don't understand what's going on on your job. You don't understand what's going on now that COVID is going on. You, you, you just feel a, a restlessness even when you pray, this is what this is about. I want you to understand the power of finding rest when you have uh, done all you can to stand. Amen. And so while I am uh, getting my um, favorite Bible, hallelujah, which is this one, I, I want to get it close to you because it is all... <laughs> Every page is almost tabbed, amen. It is important to me preaching the, the gospel, knowing it from cover to cover. And I truly just believe in this word with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul and with the joy. Uh, but you have to realize that um, if uh, you are listening or you're watching from the United States of America, uh, we are blessed. You know, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our tribulations, in the midst of not understanding what's going on, we are still blessed, America, the United States of America, because there's a North America and there's a South America. You know, Canada is part of uh, North America and Mexico and the Caribbean is part of South America. So we, we need to understand that we are blessed. But with, with all of the um, 
good morning, Reverend. But we have to realize that there are countries that are out there and people that are trying to guide the laws in the United States through social media that don't even live in our country. And so we have to be careful of some of the posts that you respond to because every post that you're responding to regarding the issues that are causing divide in this country, uh, the, some of those posts are there to keep us in divide. And, and, and uh, the, the folks that are writing the posts don't have any voting power, are not citizens. And so you're getting caught up into emotions and restlessness where you'll even see things that, you know, they're pleading the blood of Jesus over certain things, or they're saying that if you don't believe in this, you're not a Christian. If you don't vote this way, you're not a Christian. If you don't, uh, if you believe in this, uh, you're not, you can't, can't be a pastor, blah, blah, blah. And so God gave me so many scriptures and saying, you know, and I'm just going to keep it plain. He says, I got this. So that's why he's allowing us to see. That's why he says to be watchful in prayer, pray so that you'll know what you are responding to on social media so that it doesn't upset you when you see that post or somebody tags you or a tweet because because there's a lot of anger that's out there to stir up trouble, to stir up tribe strife and to stir up divide. But there are people that love the United States as we love other countries and give to other countries. But because of the sound bites and the tweets and the social media and the Instagrams, you know, we get caught up in the things that are not important to God. So we have to realize, and if I can get an amen on that, but we have to realize that God is truly in control and God is trying to show us we need to uh, definitely. Um, uh, good morning, Apostle uh, 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 Jacob. God bless you. And I'm uh, getting this. So I want you, if you are with me, to go to um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. And if you're there, just type amen. Amen. If you're there, type amen. It says this. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light hallelujah god is saying my yoke is easy and my burden is light so right now that when we are praying, you know, we we pray a fervent prayer or we pray in travail. God still wants us to rest and knowing that the petition that you have given unto God is not in vain unless we don't give it to him. Amen. And so I can give you so many scriptures on the power of knowing what God is trying to do. So we have to realize, amen, praise God. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12. And then I'm almost done. I don't want to be long today. Go to Hebrews chapter 12 and go to verse one. Okay, it says, wherefore sing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we have to get to a place, oh, hallelujah, that we begin to rest in prayer. You know, we rest in prayer. So when I am conducting deliverance, whether it's on the phone, which is around the world, the first test that I do is a Lord's Prayer test. And most people are that are, are um, demonically possessed cannot cite the Lord's Prayer, you know, without some type of cyn- being cynical or they can't recite the whole thing at all. Because I'll hear people that say, oh, I love the Lord. Yes, I know the Lord's Prayer. And then they completely, it's gone out of them. So the things of God, the the devil has blocked any goodness in them because he wants to keep them bound. And so I always tell people, start with the Lord's Prayer. Don't, Don't make it difficult. When you start there with the foundation of prayer where the apostle said, teach me how to pray. Then once you learn the power of the Lord's prayer, then prayer becomes easier. I mean, for example, when you're in a conversation with someone and they said, you know, I've been going through a lot and I need prayer. There's no way that that conversation is just going to start with, well, what do you need prayer for? I'm just going to just going to start praying. And then I'm going to ask, is there anything specifically? And it may be the opposite. It just depends on what God tells me what to do. But you have to realize that prayer is our ability to build a direct line to God. And it is important for us to do that, to stay in a Christ-like lifestyle. You have to realize that the devil is so busy, but God is busier. Can I get an amen here? All right. So we have to realize that we got to talk to God daily. We got to talk to him and pray without ceasing. We have to have a strong spiritual life in this season. Amen. So my video just went out. I'm not sure why, um, but it was on. So if you can still hear me and see me, let me know. Okay. So I don't see a, a video of myself. Um, But let me know if you can still see me or if if the video actually stopped. Um, But I'm trying to make sure, am I still on? Uh, So let's see if it's still on. Hallelujah. Um, If you can still see me, let me know. I'm going to keep going because the video hasn't uh, stopped just yet. I just don't see myself. So um, hang in there. Because it's saying it's having problems playing this video. Can you see me? All right. Uh, On Tuesday, it was hard to hear me. Today, it's hard to see me. All right. I'm going to keep going on. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, if you can see me, type, yes, you can see me or you may not be able to do it. So let me try something else. Okay. All right, so we lost this feed. I'm gonna end it and let me see. All right.